and welcome back to Dr. Noah and I'm going to be doing a kind of a series of uh, talks here uh, come November 6th uh, in California we're going to have a proposition in this state since we have gutless uh, uh, politicians in Sacramento that are afraid to pass a law or do anything that's really beneficial uh, in our Constitution here in California we're allowed to do a proposition where if you have so many uh, signatures then you're able to put this on the ballot for people to vote on and one of those is Proposition 37 and that's the initiative or proposition to have uh, people aware of what their food is all about. So it's a labeling law. Labeling law. And one of the big issues that's really kind of coming to the forefront in the health field, but, but also in terms of the environment, is genetically modified food. Now this sounds, yeah, this sounds great. You know, it's high tech. It's, you know, futuristic. You know, they have, you know, I'm sure science fiction uh, TV shows and, and movies out there about how wonderful this is. But... In fact, it goes back to a, a, a Supreme Court uh, ruling that, uh, that a corporation or a company can patent life forms. Very, very scary. I mean, it's just it's nuts. Uh, so what has happened over the last 10 to 15 years, and in particular Monsanto, which is a big you know, agri-business, uh, multinational, they got their fingers in everything, have created a, a particular type of a pesticide, Roundup. I'm sure everybody's used that and has, you know, thinks it's uh, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, you go out in your backyard, you spray it, and your weed goes away and everybody's happy. Well, once again, uh, I was reviewing some old uh, tapes from Dr. Christopher, who was a master herbalist, and he kind of commented uh, is that, you know, well, weed is something that you don't like, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of weeds, that uh, he said, uh, should actually be the predominant thing in your garden, like dandelions. Dandelions are very, very therapeutic, very healing, and very healthy, but in, in most, uh, you know, uh, United States lawns, if you see the dandelion there, you get your roundup out and zap it and it kills it. It's kind of sad. So this particular type of product was, you know, used, and it's still used very extensively, and they're making billions of dollars with it. So then with the different type of uh, genetic type of engineering that's happened over the last 20 years like that, they were starting to modify different types of foods to be able to have a certain type of outcome. And now the outcome isn't always the best for you and me, but it's a it's a good outcome. One of the first was a special type of tomato. And one of the issues with tomatoes is if it, if it starts to get kind of cold, even in California, we get some frost, that could damage the cells. And then, of course, then the farmers can't sell their tomatoes. So they understood with genetic engineering that they could t extract a gene from a fish that's in cold water that has a particular type of you know chemicals that keeps the fish cells from breaking down and injected that into a tomato. Well, you know, I don't know if that's really good, having a fish and a tomato all in the same type of things. But that's where this has kind of gone down to uh, in terms of genetic en engineering. So Monsanto had the bright idea, well, well we're going to create life forms, corn in particular, and soy, that is going to be either resistant to Roundup. So we can nuke everything, you know, the corn, the soy, and everything is going to be dead except for that particular type of plant that has this genetically modified type of gene in it that's resistant to uh, having uh, the Roundup kill it. So this is great, you know, then they can just nuke everything. And so they created a, a patent on this corn, and that's where things have kind of gone, gone bad. Also, they've created a corn that has a particular type of toxin, which we'll talk about. So when the bug eats the toxin, they die from that. You don't have to really spray because it's already, the toxin's already in the plant. Well, the problem is it's toxin, yeah, that means it's poison, it kills. So what does that do to the other animals, to the eco-environment? What about people? And as we'll talk around here, that's, that goes. So people just said, hey, you know, all we want to do is, you know, have people make a choice. If you think genetically modified, you work for Monsanto, you're making $30 million a year, you love it. Now, that's the funny thing. Actually, at the cafeteria, at the headquarters of Monsanto, they don't allow GMO food. <laughs> so what do they know that, you know, we should know? It's not good enough for the executives to eat this garbage and crap, but you know it's every it's good for everybody else because they make lots of money off this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So back on track here. So so this this is just a labeling law, and they just want to put a sign: this food is genetically modified. Okay, great. It's not making a judgment that should GMO should be banned. I think it should be, but that's not what this proposition is. It's just education and knowledge. Knowledge is power. So we want to basically allow people to make those choices. I personally recommend, I don't personally use 
GMO products, and I don't want anybody else to use it. But once again, it's a little more difficult to try to weed through all the little deceptive things that are out there. So this makes it a little bit easier there. So that's what it is. Also, it's going to prohibit the labeling and advertising and such foods as natural. As I tell my patients, natural is, once again, that word has been so butchered. You know, once again, it, it means nothing. I mean, they could take, you know, you know, Agent Orange and somehow twist, twist it to where it's natural. Natural means nothing. Oh, I'm eating natural, you know, granola bars. Well, you might as well eat, you know, cookies because it's just junk. And, you know, there's nothing, you know, good about it. Because their, their contention is natural means, you know, that it comes from somehow in a natural area, that natural field, or to get, who knows what it means. So it's worthless. So we want to, you know, so this proposition wants to kind of re, re, redo that. Uh, so that's some of the kind of the issues there. Um, one of the criticisms it has, uh, there's some exempt foods. And, and I was told because of, you know, you can't, you can't get it too broad, of, so it had to be narrowed. I don't know about that. I'm a little disappointed. So exemptions of food, foods that don't have to be labeled or certified organic. Well, in, in, the, in the criteria of certified organic, it has to be uh, not GMO. Uh, restaurants are not, uh, 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 you know, uh, have to abide by that. I don't think that's good. I'm a vegetarian. I don't want uh, another kind of product like a monosodium glutamate. So when I go in, I give them the Riot Act. You know, hey, I don't want any MSO, or excuse me, I don't want any uh, um, monosodium glutamate. I don't want any... Uh, does the, uh, the does the minestrone soup have any chicken broth or you, you just have to ask so I mean I, I, you know, I think that should also be on the on the on the menu there but that's it's not on this one here uh, alcoholic beverages there now there's some thinking is that a big push was was pushed with in, in, and I practice in Napa that the wine industry kind of once again tried to once again push a little bit so we, they didn't go over here so minor things, just think of this as a stepping stone, but definitely labeling is kind of good. Then there's been some criticism about, you know, how much it's going to cost. And th this is always kind of jokeable. I'm definitely into, you know, smaller government. Let's get the government's too big. And so the, uh, the opponents, which we'll talk about, the, these poor little uh, multinationals that make billions of dollars a, a, a second, uh, they don't want to have the government, you know, have to spend money doing this. I mean, they're just so gracious. Now, they're, they're willing to pay politicians to give them subsidies and stuff. That's okay at billions of dollars, but they don't want to, you know, uh, the poor tax dollar, taxpayer have to do this. So, I mean, it's just, it's just not honest in terms of their, their BS there. So then we look at the supporters, which kind of, kind of eye awakening goes with, you know, also follow the money. So the supporters are the Organic Consumer Association. Well, that's pretty kind of good, nice people. They want the environment to be safe. They know that herbicides and pesticides kill people. It's bad things. Uh, Institute of Responsible Technology, another kind of organization that just thinks that GMO is not a good type of thing. So they have their opinion like, like that. Uh, uh, California Democratic Party, once again, I don't want to get too much into politics there. We don't want to go there. Who are some of the actual proponents? You know, there's a doctor. There's, a, once again, an organic rice farm, Lundberg family. Uh, there's consumer watchdog, and so yeah, those are the people that are in favor of it. And and their thesis is that you should have the right to know what's in your food. I mean, that's really bottom line. Knowledge is power. So that's it. Oh, unless, once again, they don't want you to know something. That's not good. And it's in oh, I've seen between 40 and 50 countries around the world have it. So this isn't like something unique, something kooky from California, and that's kind of going on like that. And then the bottom line comes is you know. Who's, who's behind this? That's what I always look at on a proposition. Who's paying for this? Well, let's see, Mercola. Now, Mercola is an osteopath. He has a, a, a natural a website like that. It's number one in the world. You know, I look at it all the time. Yeah, you know, he's, he has his own little company there, e-commerce, but yeah, okay, that's, you know, that's okay. Uh, Organic Consumers Fund, pretty nice people. Dr. Bronner's, yeah, they're scary people, yeah. Uh, fully organic Castile soap that I use and it's been really good. Amy's Kitchen, they provide, you know, people that are busy but still have, you know, you get organic kind of foods, which is kind of nice. So those are kind of nice organizations. Now, who's against this? Well, you know, uh, you know, different type of scientists, you know, that they have uh, on, their, on their council like that, which is okay. Once again, this is, a, this, in science, there's always pros and cons, and that's, you do some tests, and that kind of tells you something, but doesn't everything, and so you move along like that. Uh, the arguments against it, like we said, you know, they're afraid about frivolous lawsuits, which is kind of a joke, and special interest groups, we already talked about that, and uh, shakedowns. So then we go into, you know, who's sponsoring this? So is it uh, Pete and Mary, the, uh, you know, 
the um, uh, nursery down the street that, you know, they like Roundup. I mean, they think that works well. Instead of using natural techniques or maybe accepting that like that, maybe it's, maybe it's Mary and Pete the nursery down the street. Uh, the number one, seven million dollars, and that's the other thing, you know, how much money is there? So the, in terms of Ford, Mercola spent a million dollars. Well, that's a lot of money, and there's other organizations, but as, as it's stated here that, you know, tens of thousands of people was under a hundred dollars. On the other side, unfortunately, it's not the same thing. So who's the number one? Is it Mary and Pete's uh, nursery down the street that likes Roundup? DuPont. Oh, that's right, multinational. And what do they do? They make chemicals and poisons. And I've been around, you know, for almost over 60 years now. DuPont, you know, yeah, they're, you know, they're, they're claiming the fame is, you know, a, you know, better future with chemistry and all like that. I mean, most of this stuff is garbage, has no science, hurts people, and that's how it goes. Dow, oh, that's nice. Agent Orange, Napalm, oh, that's good, that's good. Coming, $4.9 million. Bear, one of my favorite. They, this, is, this is the best type of thing. Bear, as we'll talk about, uh, BASF, and uh, I think one other type of company. These are drug companies. So, so, so their 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 contention is, which I you know uh, I I talk about all this. Their drugs are just as toxic as, as Roundup. But you know that they're on one side saying you know we're for humanity, we're out there for the children, we want to cure cancer and help all these people. And then I say, well, where's the science? Uh, oh, that's right, there's any. Uh, just like uh, yesterday, a little off the topic, uh, they found out that beta blockers, which is for blood pressure, uh, it doesn't really you know prevent any deaths. So this is the little game they play. We've talked about that with statin drugs. Sure, statin drugs, you know, screw up your liver, blocks an enzyme, your cholesterol comes down, but you still die. So, but you know, they like to play this game. You know, we're, we're just great healers, and we get your number down. And what happened to Mary? Oh, she died yesterday of heart disease. Oh, well, what happened with your statin drugs? Oh, I don't know. I have to play golf. I'll talk to you about that a little later. So then we have another great uh, company, uh, Pepsi. Oh yeah, they're really into good food. You know, you know, states are starting to regulate that. I don't agree with it. New York City is banning, you know, 64 ounces. Come on, hey, people get two 32 ounces. This is, you know, why waste our time like that? So we have Pepsi, uh, 1.7 million dollars. We have Coca-Cola. Oh, another great company that's probably killed more people. Those two companies alone than uh, almost as much as the drug industry has. So what's the motive behind that? So I mean, I'm just thinking from New Jersey. Maybe this is a good proposition, regardless, because these people know that they, they sell sickness and death, and, you know, they want to continue doing that, and they want to fool you. Uh, Kellogg's, which is, once again, garbage cereals and stuff, Hershey, garbage chocolate, and I talk a lot about chocolate, but it's not a Hershey bar. Sorry, out there. Uh, Council of Biotechnology, oh, yeah, they have no special interest there. They're the ones that make these billions of dollars making this kind of garbage with, once again, the, the hope that we're going to be able to cure and do um, remarkable things. Well, uh, it doesn't usually happen. Grocers, manufacturers. Uh, so, so that in itself kind of gives you an overview of exactly what's kind of going on in terms of this proposition. Find out who supports it, where the money's come from, and figure out you know, who's going to benefit from this. Right now, they know that you know 60 to 70 percent of the people they've polled. If you knew you were eating genetically modified food, and I'm sure most of them don't even know what that is, but it doesn't sound kind of good, they're not going to buy it, and that's what this bottom line is. So in our next segment, we'll start kind of going through some of the concerns beyond that, and as we we'll go along here, we'll go through the science. There's a big study from uh, from France, from uh, uh, a peer-reviewed medical journal that actually shows once again. It, it hurts females and causes tumors, and we'll kind of go over that. So now there's growing evidence that maybe this isn't the best thing. Now, of course, you always have the, you know, the other side, which is the info commercial. You have the sponsored, you know, uh, DuPont and Dow Chemical and, and Bayer and BASF, the drug companies, sponsoring them. But that's right. You know, they have a, a motive. They, they make money off it.